All right, so I'm hitting that now. So it says we're live. I'll give it a couple yes. seconds, but um, all right. So I'm gonna jump into it here in three, two. Welcome to Talk With History. I am your host, Scott, here with my wife and historian, Jen. Hello. On this podcast, we give you insights to our history-inspired world travels, YouTube channel journey, and examine history through deeper conversations with the curious, the explorers, and the history lovers out there. Now, today we have a guest. We haven't had anybody in a little while. So today we are joined by Eddie, the host of History Unlimited account on Instagram and other places. Welcome, Eddie. Thank you, Scott and Jen. I really appreciate the invite tonight and look forward to our discussion. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Now, before we get into, into chatting with uh, Eddie, I want to ask any of our listeners or our watchers on YouTube, um, before we get into the main topic, I want to ask for some reviews on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Uh, we are trying to grow the podcast, and these reviews really do help us get discovered. And remember, we still have our goal of defeating the History <laughs> Channel as a top destination for all things history. I'm coming for you. History Doesn't everybody? <laughs> I'm, I'm, co I'm coming for you. Bring history back. All right. Yes, yes. So, uh, Instead of UFOs and gold somewhere on an island, uh, somewhere off the Atlantic. <laughs> yeah. that, that's good. Absolutely. <laughs> So today we are joined by Eddie, who many of you may know as the brains behind the very popular Instagram account, History Unlimited. Eddie also runs an account on Facebook and TikTok and is a military historian and firefighter with degrees in both history and fire science. A fellow Navy veteran, Eddie is also a current Navy parent. Thank you for joining us tonight, Eddie. And Eddie, right now as of recording, you've got about 140,000 followers on Instagram, but it sounds like you may have tried a few things before you got there. So can yes. you tell us a little bit about that, the evolution of the various accounts that you've you've done, you've tried out? Maybe there's some that are sitting in the graveyard that you just haven't touched in a while, <laughs> um, sure. which, which we all are familiar with. Uh, oh, but can yeah. you tell us a little bit about that, that like a little bit about yourself and then kind of how you kind of sure. came to some of the accounts you're running now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm just about to hit 150,000. <laughs> so oh, awesome. I'm, I'm, right looking, I'm looking forward to that. And um, I have about maybe a couple hundred more and I, I love every one of my followers and appreciate every one of them. Um, I started on um, a site called WordPress. I'm sure you're familiar with that. Yep. And That's I started I writing, of. yeah, I, I started writing, uh, you know, this day in history articles and taking content from um, papers I did while in college and putting them all together in a format where I can deliver uh, different insights on historical topics that, you know, are popular and some unpopular. So I started mm -hmm. there and I gradually worked my way at the Facebook and I started the uh, History Writer, was my original account on Facebook. And I did the same thing there. Okay. I just a larger audience, a larger format. Sure. And mm -hmm. um, after a while, I started to get involved in uh, TikTok. It was very funny how I got involved in TikTok. My daughter, um, who turns 18 uh, in two days. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Happy birthday. Yeah. She had a Musical.ly account. And Musical.ly was the precursor to TikTok, obviously. Uh, owned okay. by the same company, Bike Dance. So I wanted to try it out and say, you know what? She wasn't using the account anymore. She made a new one. So let me take this account and, uh, you know, go on and take a look at the videos. I heard TikTok is pretty cool. And mm -hmm. I happened to go on around uh, the anniversary of uh, September 11th in uh, 2019. So okay. I went on a, uh, a video that showed uh, the South Tower collapsing. OK, and I just yeah. happened to mention on there that I am a firefighter and was a first responder to the World Trade Center uh, during yes, and after 9-11. You were there. You yes. searched you searched for survivors yes. after. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I did. I did mm -hmm. it for four days and five nights, I think it was. Yeah, five nights. Mm -hmm. So I was there in rescue and recovery um, in the days after 9-11. And I mm -hmm. made a comment on one of the videos and the comment immediately, you know, like comments on all videos that are viral went viral itself and all of a sudden i started oh, wow. getting followers on this page and i had people coming oh, on my page wow. saying well that that's not you that's your daughter you know she looks like 12 i'm like well that's my daughter and so i yeah. started to have to, I, I had to start making content on my own so sure. being a new creator I, I really didn't know how to do it very well but um i started making you know content very slowly some little videos here and there 
Um, my first video, I believe, was about the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand in 1914. Okay. okay. Yep. And it was a short or, video, yeah. and I took off from there. Um, mm -hmm. And then I started making more and got a little better. The History Writer um, got to around 50,000 followers. And unfortunately, wow. uh, that's when TikTok started to impose its stricter guidelines into mm -hmm. historical content. And being oh. a military historian, you know, they started to crack down on combat footage and anything to talk. Mm -hmm. You couldn't talk about World War II. You couldn't talk about the Third Reich. You couldn't talk oh, about wow. any history of the wow. period without being heavily scrutinized. So mm -hmm. my my account there got shadow banned. I'm sure you know what shadow banning is. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So um, I started a um, another page, and uh, that was the you know page the history unlimited, and that account okay. got to around 130,000 followers. Until guess what? That page too was taken down, and I lost oh, that account entirely. It was banned. Yeah. Um, oh I had gosh. a Vietnam War page uh, that I specifically ran on TikTok dedicated to the Vietnam War era itself. That got to around 70,000 followers. And guess what they did with that page? They banned that one as well. <laughs> so wild. I just turned around one day and said, you know what? What's a really good TikTok alternative? Because this TikTok thing isn't working out very well. And I wasn't sure. really into YouTube very much. You know, so I mean, I love YouTube. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. But as a creator, sure. it, wasn't, it wasn't really for me. So mm -hmm. I decided to, you know, expand upon the History Unlimited page that I had begun a couple of years ago, but never posted anything on it. And I started creating videos. And soon I realized the more videos I created, I was taking a risk on posting, you know, combat footage. And I posted a video um, about the assassination attempt on Adolf Hitler with Stauffenberg. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. it actually did very well. But what I was surprised about was that Instagram allowed the content to stay up. And after that, yeah. I realized, you know what? Instagram isn't as strict as TikTok is. Maybe I could do some more. Interesting. And it just mm -hmm. snowballed. I just started creating more content. I share a lot of combat footage. If you've seen my page, yeah. you'll know that. You do. Yeah. Um, yeah. You share a lot of combat but, footage. <laughs> you know, what, what makes my page a little different than my colleagues, and I have a lot of people who I collab with. I try to help their account and vice versa. I know you. I yeah, know you did that. that for us too. Yeah, I did. Yes, figure out how to I do did. It. We couldn't figure out how to do it, but yeah. thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> it's actually how I'm growing my Vietnam War account. I, I have almost ten thousand oh. followers on that account. So I'm mm -hmm. trying to, you know, collab with that one. We're Vietnam War content. So I have a collaborator for each period in history. Because what makes, what makes my account unique is that I cover all periods of history. I don't focus on one specific yeah. area. You might have yeah, somebody. That's us too. Yeah, right. Exactly. You said that's why mm -hmm. you yeah. know we're very similar in our, our content yeah. production, like you had mentioned. And you're absolutely correct. And um, mm -hmm. I try to focus on what my followers enjoy to see the most. And that really sure. centers on the Second World War, Vietnam, the First World War, mm -hmm. to a degree, the Korean War. Civil War is really yeah. popular also, but when you start going back further in history and you want to start covering subjects that you like in particular the most, it's not as popular. Because when you go back past the 19th century, all the way down to the Napoleonic Wars, right then and there in the Napoleonic era and the Age of Revolutions yeah. is where the majority of people's interests stop. And there's a huge gap there. It's ancient yeah. history to the pre-modern era. And Mm -hmm. In between is hard to post because there's not a large audience out there for that. And you got to sure. please your followers. Otherwise, you'll you'll lose them. <laughs> so you don't want to do that. Absolutely. And you want to satisfy your 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 viewership. And I do that mm -hmm. to satisfy my viewership. Um, lately, I've been posting more about the war in Ukraine. And there's, uh, yeah. you know, a lot of accounts out there that specifically uh, cover the war in Ukraine. So. What I'll do is I'll, I'll take some content that I see that's shared either off YouTube or other platforms and I'll convert them into a nine by 16 video format and, yeah. you know, share it on Instagram. And it does really well on Reels. Um, if it's a long video, I put, a, I put it as a post or a story mm -hmm. and they get mm -hmm. a really good response for it. And uh, the one thing I've been you know, running into problems with is that, of course, when you post about the Ukraine war, you're you, you're. You're either one side or the other in the community. Yeah. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, you try to be fair and I'm very unbiased when it comes to that. Yes. I'm obviously a Ukraine supporter. Okay. But there's two sides of every story and I have followers from both sides. So I try to post as sure. much content from both as I can, but people don't seem to understand that there's more content uh, from the Ukrainian side than there is from the Russian side because of the censorship. Sure. Mm-hmm. In Russia. So there's very yeah, little absolutely. coming out of there. So I, I've had to deal with that lately. Like, oh, you're biased because you're posting about the Russians. And then I post about the Ukrainians and they're saying the same thing to me. I'm like, no, I'm just trying to post yeah. the truth. <laughs> you know, I'm posting yeah. history Eddie, and amazing. I've been accused of being right wing and left wing for the same video. <laughs> Oh, sure. So, of course. I was like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It happens all the time. And, and, you know, you'll notice from from engaging in your your engagement on posts is very important for the followers to know who you are personally. And Mm -hmm. I try to do that as much as possible. I try to answer as many comments as I can. But, you know, when you have a bunch of DMs coming in and when you have sure. tens of thousands of people trying to contact you, you can't always get to everyone and you feel bad about it. Um, sure. But you know, the one thing I noticed with uh, creators that uh, are larger than mine, accounts that are larger than mine, they don't follow a lot of people and sometimes they don't engage with anybody. So I try mm-hmm. to not make that same mistake to try to get a better reputation not try to emulate what they do in making that mistake. And the way I become a creator was take all of the, the, uh, you know, methods that I learned from other creators on every platform and put them together into this account. And I deliver it in different formats. I mean, sometimes I'll post just a a regular war video, combat footage. Other times I'll post to this Mm -hmm. day in history where I I talk. Mm -hmm. And there's other times where Mm -hmm. I might show up on the screen. You never know what I'm going to do. Yep. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm less likely to show up on screen nowadays because my philosophy is that people are going on to watch a video. They'd rather watch pictures or videos and my face. And <laughs> I'm yeah. just being honest about it. So <laughs> I, I try to show, sure. yeah, give everybody a good, decent, you know, viewership into what the content is about. <laughs> but that's uh sure. that's how I started out in a nutshell. And um, it's it's been going good so far. <laughs> no, that's that's that's, that's right. awesome, and and having that kind of varied you know experience, honestly, like sometimes when you have something bad like that happen, you yeah. censorship, you get shut down. You also get a lot of ex- experience at the same mm-hmm. time. Oh yeah. So there's not a lot Absolutely. of people that will have have had to jump through all those hoops and learn the ins and mm-hmm. outs just from like the yep. the the downside of of mm-hmm. doing that. So that's that's super cool and um Yeah, I like your workarounds. Yeah. I like your oh, workarounds you. and then the way, you know, the way you yeah. figured out what to cuz I mean, wait, when you figure out what doesn't work, you also figure out what does work. Right. Yes. Right? And right, yes. is that what Edison said? I, I figured out yes. a thousand ways not it to is make what a light bulb, right? Right. 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 Edison yeah, so I mean that, Yeah. <laughs> he probably took yeah. that so, he probably took that quote from uh, Tesla like everything else, but yeah. <laughs> oh sure, he probably did. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Most likely. <laughs> well, uh, well, I, so it's it's always fun to kind of get a, a good little snapshot of our, of our guests. But one of the things that I like to do on the podcast that's kind of mm-hmm. fun is a lot of times we do a word association game. It's what I call history sure. word association game. Now, okay. for for yours, I was trying to kind of figure out something to do, so I'm doing something a little bit different. And okay. this is this is more of a history fill in the blank, and okay. you'll see the theme pretty pretty quick pretty quickly here. Very easy, just kind of a fun way to broach a topic. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the words, you just fill in the blank, and then we'll we'll okay. kind of just go from there. So sure. the first one is going to be the blank locker. What would you feel? Oh, like the hurt blank? locker. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So the hurt locker. So now the next one will be all blank on the blank front. All quiet on the western front. All right, I think you're you're probably sensing the sensing the theme here. <laughs> this one is the blank blank line. The thin red line. All right. Next one is blank now. Oh, I love this one. Apocalypse now. There we go. Yeah, we'll we'll get to chat about some of these. <laughs> <laughs> I got two more here. All right, this one should be this one's a little trickier. The blank yeah, this one on is the trickier. blank blank. Hmm. Yeah, this one's this one's a little hard. Uh, this is where Jen got. Hung I will up. admit I did not get this one. Yeah. 
Wow, this one's tough. Um, this one, this one, this this one's a little bit hard. Words. Usually, because people don't people don't usually say the at the beginning. Yeah, of and yeah, I was bummed because yeah. I, I I love this movie. Wow. Um, oh boy, this one is gonna get me. I'm sure it will. Uh, yes. Yeah. So, I'm so stumped on so this I'll, one. I'll I'll get. I'll give you the okay. hints on this one. And again, Jen right. didn't get this one either. This one's the bridge on the river Kwai. Oh yeah. Okay. There you yes. go. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I said, people, I did the same yeah, thing. And people don't usually yeah. say like the, the at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and the last one is blank, blank Ryan, which is oh, I think saving, probably the saving private Ryan. Ones. That's self-explanatory. Saving yes. private Ryan. So, so I did all those just to do something fun, something a little bit different. But what I, what I wanted to, to use that was, mm -hmm. it's like, those are some of the, I was looking around at, kind of lists of what people consider some of the top history, military history movies of all time. And a sure. lot of those ones are kind of ones that I saw on different websites. So what are some of your kind of favorite, you mentioned Apocalypse Now. Um, yes. What are, what are some of your kind of favorite military movies um, that, that you can just watch over and over? And for anybody watching and in, in the comments, please feel free to drop yours in the comments as well. So, mm -hmm. so what's one of yours? First and foremost, Glory. Oh yeah, the movie that, Glory, and the reason for it is it's, it's an outstanding movie, and I was in the movie as an extra. Okay, um, oh cool. I do, yeah, I've been an American Civil War reenactor for thirty-five years, mm. give or take. Okay, so I've been able to um, play as an extra in Glory, in Gettysburg, in Gazan Generals. Um, I wouldn't recommend Gazan cool. Generals, uh, but you know, Gettysburg is a great movie. Also, it's a marathon yes, it movie. Yep. Yeah, it really is. So, Eddie, well, do you have the Union uniform or the Confederate yes. uniform? Like, what uniform have you put together? <laughs> no, I, I portray a Union officer. I'm a Union lieutenant, first okay. lieutenant. Okay. <laughs> yes. That's expensive. Oh, That's yeah. It costs, to put that all together? Uh, my, wow. From when I first started at 16 years old um, until a few years ago when I stopped buying pieces to my kit, I would probably say between myself and my parents, we've spent – at least thirty thousand dollars over the years oh, God. yeah wow. and just the uniform yeah. and accoutrements and the weapons and everything else it you know you put sure. a lot of money into it because you want to look as authentic as possible and mm -hmm. you know your your portrayal of your character yeah. is determined by how you look you know you look the part mm -hmm. you're gonna play the part better so yeah. the glory is definitely on my top of my list um the Cross of Very Iron cool. is another movie which I absolutely love. And okay. The Duelists, about the Napoleonic Wars, the two duelists, okay? Oh, cool. um, Patton, of course, on everybody's list, I would imagine. <laughs> That's a great one. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that was one of the other ones yeah. I saw, yeah. in, like top Scott. 15, top 20 on some mm -hmm. of those pages, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, let's see. God, there's so many of them. I mean, I, I've, I've mentioned I perhaps you know, so many I've seen, but, um, there's, uh, Hunt for Red October, there's Crimson Tide, they're oh, military yeah. type so movies, good. they're not really history, but, uh -huh. you know, the, the, yeah. the, the Hunt for Red October is based on a true story from what took place mm -hmm. in the 1970s, so really it is a history yeah. story, like, that, that that's exaggerated a bit, um, yeah. the K-19, oh, yeah. you know, the K-19, I oh, enjoyed yeah. that movie very that's much, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anything. We really like submarines, huh? Were you a submariner? No, I was not. Were you no. A submariner? <laughs> no. No. Definitely not. No. Uh. Uh. I see submarines and I, I go, I don't want to be in that. No. My, <laughs> my, my daughter, uh, my daughter works in naval intelligence and she works with uh, communications for subs. Um, yeah. Of, of course, you know, I, I can't really talk about where she is, but. Uh, she, sure. you know, her, her clear, you know, from your experience, the clearance, uh, you I know, was a submarine hunter. Up. My, there you yeah, go. My helicopter was a submarine <laughs> so you hunter. Know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You definitely yep. know. But, uh, yeah, I mean, my, my career in the Navy, uh, was very short lived. Unfortunately, I had an injury and it precluded me, mm. precluded me, excuse me, from continuing on what I felt was an entire career. And um, yeah. it was disappointing, you know, and I didn't really get to experience the, the full experience of, uh, you know, four years, six years. My daughter's on a six year contract, so um, sure, she'll be okay. done in a few years. But but yeah, um, those are the movies that I enjoy. 
Um, of course, yeah. I, I've seen basically everything at least once. I mean, you name it, sure. I've seen it. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, I mean, what would you what would you say yours are, Jen? Like some of your top favorites? I always think everyone needs to watch the first ten minutes of Saving Private Ryan. I think it needs to be oh, shown yeah. in every high Absolutely. school. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, the story is you know it definitely gets, and I I appreciate that story too, for the highs and lows and the humanity of the people choices yeah. that they're making during that. And I I like, but it but it is a story. Um, but the beginning is so well shot. I think it is. Um, that everyone needs to, needs to see that. Um, well, when they when they first uh, you know, screened that movie, uh, veterans of D-Day were actually crying in the movie theater because it was so yeah. realistic yeah, sure. in their experience. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. I mean, it, it's unbelievable. And that, that movie was very popular for a long time when it first came out. And mm -hmm. it, it, it inspired uh, Band of Brothers to be produced. And it, exp yes. it, it you know, yeah. It, and also the Pacific, which is the Band of Brothers counterpart for the you know Pacific Theater. Yes, yep. um, absolutely. So mm -hmm. all those they're very well produced series, and they kind of all are very similar to Saving Private Ryan the way they're produced. The uh, cinematography mm -hmm. and the special effects are all the same, and they have the same feel. Like you're actually on a battlefield right there. You know, it, it's yes. it's it's very intense, and you know. I love movies like that. They're awesome. <laughs> yeah, and and I will say that new um 1917 really pulled me in. Oh yeah. That that one that I one thought was that really was good. well done and I got pulled into that story, the realism mm -hmm. of all of that. I yes. really I I enjoyed that one as well too. Yeah, I think that that one for me you know, I, Eddie, I, I joke on this podcast all the time that <laughs> I am often at a severe disadvantage on this podcast because I, I am not the history nerd whenever I am interviewing <laughs> someone who's a, who's a huge history buff like yourself, you know, degrees in it. And then, That's you know, okay. my wife, the historian. And uh, so so it actually kind of brings a different perspective from my side because I haven't seen right. a lot of mm -hmm. these movies. I've seen some of them, right. but some of the ones I, I actually was was happy to see Hurt Locker. A little bit higher because yeah. it's a newer movie right mm -hmm. 2008 yes. time frame i think yeah um, around then but it was it was right around then but but i appreciated that there was another one i actually did see at the time i saw jarheads did you ever see jarheads, <laughs> yes. see jarheads. So, oh yeah so jarheads yeah. was actually was actually really good yeah. it was jake gyllenhaal, jake gyllenhaal. yeah but yes. he 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 shows what he was a sniper mm -hmm. right and yes. the whole movie is about this one chance he had to actually to actually been. like shoot someone yeah and then it doesn't, it basically doesn't happen. And he deals with like that he wanted to, like he wanted to do the one thing that he was trained to do and all the stuff like post war. And mm -hmm. so I, I, a lot of the movies that I actually have seen, which are tend to be the much more popular ones, or like the Saving Private Ryan's yeah. and things like that, right, right, do a right. great job of showing the kind of the aftermath, the, whether, you know, back in the day they called it shell shock and now we know it's PTSD. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I mean, we were even, we started watching, we, we tried out that show on Netflix called Peaky Blinders. Oh, yeah. And Peaky Blinders, yeah, so, so and one of the characters in there, it's just after World War I. One. Mm -hmm. yes. And one of the characters in there, they is kind of has what we would know now of like severe PTSD. Is mm -hmm. what I think he's what ends up being one of the Peaky Blinders. But yeah, um, somebody just said Black Hawk Down. I, I actually love Black Hawk Down too. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm a you I'm a Black Hawk I'm Down. a Black Hawk pilot. Yeah. So when I yeah, yes. there's, there's things I that I watch it and I'm like, you know, it's it hits me hard. I usually yeah. have to be working out when I watch it, but uh, I do like Black Hawk yeah. Down a lot. So so th those are, those are the ones that I that I tend to appreciate. And really, all the good movies, I think, yeah, and, and you could you would probably agree with this. Show what what war does, kind mm -hmm. of to yeah. the soldier, to the sailor, to to the members yes. during and after. I mean, it's just it's just right. so intense. Yeah, um, but I I enjoy that they're becoming more. Um, they're hitting the bigger audiences, yeah. and they're hitting because mm -hmm. you know some movies did do that, but I I don't know. I enjoy that they're starting to zero in on more women or different yes. types of people on different sides and they're trying to show more the humanity of war yeah. and that really the both sides of it but i i can also watch like a movie that's pretty hollywood i can watch the patriot over and over again yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely the patriot i could talk about an hour and a half for that one <laughs> <laughs> and um, that's just, like okay oh, <laughs> there's, there's, there's some that are over the top 
Yeah, that's really over the top. It's, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> a, a gross exaggeration of history. And from a reenacting standpoint, yes. it was a train wreck. No pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> But yeah, uh, I but I I enjoy historical movies. I like you said, Hunt for Red October. I really yeah. enjoyed that, and I do love all like the Jack Ryan movies oh, yeah. as well. Well, well and and that's one of the things, right? Again, not not kind of having the the history fan background mm-hmm. that I have, but starting this channel, and I'm sure you can probably attest to from some of the accounts that you've had, is one of the things that tends to draw people to history is the stories, right? Is yes. these amazing mm-hmm. stories of what these people right. are doing. Mm-hmm. So really, that's what that is. It's not right. only history on the on the fact side of things, but what draws people in, and that's why they make Hollywood movies out of this stuff, sure. is the amazing stories that come out of it. Yes, that. yes. There, there really is just some some amazing people that do some amazing things, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and very inspiring. I will say, though, and, and Scott knows this, changing Jack Ryan's PhD from history <laughs> to economics really yeah. upset me. In the yeah, new series, I'm like, no, no, he has a PhD <laughs> in history. Yeah, like, yes, and people does. don't realize how important that would be to have, because as you know, Eddie, to have a degree in history, and I know President Obama kept a historian on staff. Yes. It's so important to today and uh, politics of today to know your history. Yes, and I can see, you know, that's why a PhD for Jack Ryan was so in history was so important. But yeah. now they changed the yeah. economics. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you're absolutely correct. And when you have a, a, a character that's that popular and recognizable mm-hmm. in, in, you know, I mean, Tom Clancy characters are all recognizable, but especially yeah. Jack Ryan to change his his, you know, his basically his uh, degree program or whatever is mm-hmm. just yeah, like, sure. you know, changing a part of history itself. So like, yeah. you, you can't do that. Yeah, it that just changes upsetting. the whole dynamic <laughs> of the, the storyline. But you are you are yeah. right. I mean, every every movie when they attach a story to it, like you mentioned, nineteen seventeen. Yes, it mm-hmm. was set during the horrific World War One. Okay, um, mm-hmm. but it had a story to it. You know, All Quiet on mm-hmm. the Western Front. That had a story to it, and that's probably mm-hmm. the most remarkable World War One movie I've ever seen. The the most updated yeah, version yeah, yeah. of All Quiet on the Western Front. Mm-hmm. Uh, War Horse comes a close second to that, which was very good. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, one of the movie I wanted to mention that um, is one of my personal favorites, Waterloo from 1970. Um, I'm oh, okay. a big Waterloo, Napoleon yeah. fan. Napoleon is you my are personal a big Napoleon idol. fan. <laughs> yes, I love Napoleon. Napoleonic Wars or Napoleonic Era, mm-hmm. and I'm really looking forward to the new Napoleon movie coming out. So uh, with oh, okay. uh, Jacqueline Phoenix playing as Napoleon. So uh, it'll oh be my, my gosh. Show. Wow. Yeah, it's a big production and they're coming out with a series on top of the film. And I think it's be great because Napoleon is such an important figure in history that is really he's more books have been written about Napoleon than any other person in history, with the exception of Jesus Christ in the Bible. And wow. I'm not really a religious person, but I'll recognize that it, that's the most popular book ever written and published. Mm-hmm. Um, Napoleon comes a second. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty remarkable. And that's all really due to the um, British propaganda engine after the Napoleonic Wars, where they tried to make him look smaller, literally, than he really mm-hmm. was. Because uh, mm-hmm. he was larger than life at the time. He really, you know, and they yeah. tried to minimize his accomplishments because of the disdain they had for him. But um, this should be a good movie and it should give, you know, young people a good understanding of a subject that really isn't very touched upon in mainstream education right now. You know, you really don't talk about that. And it had a serious impact on the current world we live in. I mean, you know, real quick, not to not to get into a Napoleonic subject, but uh, one of my my thesis in, in college was to, you know, the origins of World War One. And a lot of people like Mm -hmm. to point to the Franco-Prussian War and the arms Mm -hmm. race and acronym, the main, uh, you know, I pointed to the Congress of Vienna in 1814, which redrew the map of Europe and established the alliance systems that 100 years later would be uh, enacted. So that would propel Europe into war, spiraling out of control. So there there is a connection between the two. And um, I think it's really understudied. You know, and it's very interesting. Yeah, that's very interesting. I, I would like to read your thesis. Um, I, I Napoleon has a huge impact on America. Absolutely. I mean, especially when you think of 
uh, in America, but the French mm-hmm. and yes. with Haiti and then yeah. with, uh, you know, the Louisiana Purchase, the like it's a huge impact on on every on our history as well. Yes. So I can definitely see that. I, I'm looking forward to seeing that movie, too. Do you know? Are they? It's going to be like his whole life, or just like one part of his, just water? No, or? it's. I think it's going to be just his um, when he became first consul of France in 1800, okay. and then all the way until 1815. Um, but I could be wrong. You know, the series itself, I believe, is supposed to predate 1800. So it's probably going to start his career out in 1792, okay, and then work its way up to the French mm-hmm. Revolutionary Wars. And then sure. it'll probably stop at where the movie takes over. So they're kind of doing it in reverse, but it, it should be interesting sure. to see how they present it. Um, yeah. Since you mentioned uh, Napoleon and American history, you know, the two are, are very much intertwined. And uh, the mm-hmm. United States was Napoleon's only international ally during the coalition wars. And one of the least known facts about the War of 1812, okay, is that the War of 1812 and Napoleon's campaign of 1812 in Russia were mm-hmm. linked mm-hmm. because uh, President Madison and also mm-hmm. Napoleon had a secret cabal where they communicated to uh, schedule the timetable of the declaration of war against Great Britain and a declaration of war against Russia. And it all happened in June. And they were very close to getting it within the day, which is remarkable for the communications of the wow. time period. But they only Absolutely. discovered this. In, yeah, they only discovered this in the early 20th century, and they were secret letters wow. that were that were sent between the two. And um, it's really not in history books, and they're only starting to come out right now. When there's a book written about the War of 1812, they'll mention it like in a chapter or whatever. But um, sure. it's, it's very much understood, you know. That's a forgotten war. You know, we cover oh, yeah. the War of 1812 a lot because we lived in Erie, Pennsylvania, and Oliver Hazard mm-hmm. Perry and the war, you know, yeah. the Battle of yeah. Lake Erie was such a huge part of where we lived. So you have sure. to know about the War of 1812. But that's a forgotten war. You know, people don't know much about that war and the battles around that war. People will, when you talk about the burning of D.C., they'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And you talk about, you know, the Star Spangled Banner. They'll be like, oh, okay, yeah, I, I kind of remember. Yeah. But, uh really talking about the war and the battles and the naval history and stuff. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. That, it's, that's, it's a, already, that's, a, that's one that does need more attention. Yeah. That whole time period, you know, the uh, mm-hmm. establishment of the young Republic with George Washington as the first president. I mean, no mm-hmm. time in, in our history has our nation been in such peril than his two presidency, his two terms, uh, the French revolution. Mm-hmm. That was a major event in the world at the time. I know. And yeah. it could have drawn the United States into conflict with either side and sure. crippled the Republic. I mean, it's amazing what, mm-hmm. what he was able to accomplish, but, um, yeah, I mean, there's, you know, you said you lived in Pennsylvania. I mean, I live in New Jersey. So if we're <laughs> writing across, they, they call New Jersey the crossroads of the American revolution for a reason. <laughs> now it's all yeah. around you. Yeah. It's everywhere. Yeah. So uh, when, you, when you're living among history, when you're living among history, you you tend to enjoy it a whole lot more. <laughs> I totally agree. Yes, with that. that's interesting, and I, I think this is kind of a good segue into one of the next questions that I like to ask our guests is sure um, is is gr- growing up right. I, I like to see kind of people's first history memory, right? And it yeah. and oh, yeah. either I I often to ask you know what's the first historical event that you remember. But since mm-hmm. we're talking about Napoleon, something that we may or may not learn in school, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll kind of broaden that into, you know, what's one of the first things you may remember learning about history in school or, mm-hmm. you know, a, a historical event, uh, something okay. like that from earlier in your childhood that that kind of just sticks out in your mind, you know, f- from your mm-hmm. youth when it comes to history. Well, the very first thing I remember when I was able to watch TV uh, at the age of five years old was the end of the Vietnam War, 1975. Mm. Um, I remember the videos of the uh, helicopters on the the roof of the U.S. Embassy and the people evacuating. Oh, yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. I was able to, you know, have those memories. Um, But my first experience actually uh, is pretty funny. There's two experiences I had. First is my uh, my parents bought me what was called the Story of America cards for the bicentennial celebration in 1976. And okay. I don't know if you're very familiar with these. You probably could find them on eBay if you take a look. But they're 
their history cards. And, and you know, we didn't have the internet back then, obviously. Okay. So sure. in order to yeah. get your history, you had to read. <laughs> you know, you actually had to go to the library. Yeah. Encyclopedia. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like it was like a, an abbreviated encyclopedia in card format. Mm-hmm. And I started reading and I'm like, I don't know what I'm reading, but it sounds pretty cool. You know, I mean, the American Revolution, George Washington, you know, uh, Alexander Hamilton. uh, What's the Civil War thing? I was like, wow, you know, I had to ask my dad. And Mm -hmm. when I was in the second grade, the uh, teacher I had, her name was Mr. Rico. We had to do a book report. So it, it was on social studies. So she said, I want you to go to the library. Everybody go to the library. Nice size library in a grammar school I went to. And pick out a book mm-hmm. and write a book report about it. So I sure. went in there, okay, already armed with the knowledge where I wanted to find something about history because I love these Story of America cards. And I just happened to pull out uh, David Chandler's Campaigns of Napoleon. It's about a, a 1,200-page huh. book. And I remember oh seeing gosh. the book and reading it wow. and learning about this guy, Napoleon, in the preface. I'm like, wow, he seems pretty cool. This guy won a lot of battles. So I brought it to my teacher, and she thought it was a joke. She's like, you went to the teacher <laughs> section, the faculty <laughs> section. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm like, I really want it. So she goes, okay. So I to make a long story short, I wrote a book report on the book after I read it. And I've read oh it about four or five gosh. times since. You know, but that's my first oh my experience gosh. with history in school. <laughs> what a, that's that, awesome. That's so different. Yeah. I really appreciate you sharing that with us. That's no such a neat story mm-hmm. that, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I kind of. And you love Napoleon even today, which yeah, is very yeah. cool, you know. Well, yeah. and, and, for, and for me, right, just to kind of be silly about it, kind of hits me right in the feels because it's like, right, you're <laughs> you're, you're getting a book from the library, which which for yep. us, I think for, for our generation, right, me being the younger one on this, this, this <laughs> conversation here. Um, but, uh, you know, be, being born in 1982 myself, right? So, so I'll, I'll turn for, I'll turn 41 okay. this, this coming year. <laughs> but uh, again, for, for me that I spent a ton of time in my youth because where I, where I grew up in central California, I didn't get free television. My parents didn't pay for cable or anything mm-hmm. like that. So I just read a ton. And so oh, I yeah. appreciate that. And, and it's so interesting that, Hey, you know, instead of reading, you know, the Hardy Boys like I did when I was mm-hmm. a kid, you were reading about Napoleon. That's so I, cool. I just think yes. that's, that's so neat, and I think that's 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 really cool. that's such a cool way Thank to you. be like that's the thing that's where I planted my flag, and that's and that's where my my love of history started. That's that's really really yep. cool. I, I appreciate that. that. So Thank Eddie, wait, who, who do you think has portrayed Napoleon the best then in a movie so mm-hmm. far? That's a good like, well, it's a toss up between two and Rod Steiger uh, in uh, Waterloo in 1970. He portrayed an excellent okay. Napoleon and also Armand de Sante. Um, That's 19- what I was thinking of. And yeah, yeah Napoleon and, Jul- and Josephine. Mm-hmm. Yes. Great. Series. I love I watched that whole miniseries. Yeah, really? it really is awesome. <laughs> and he, he his demeanor is very much how like Napoleon was and he even looked like him. Now, Rod mm-hmm. Steiger, uh, during the Battle of Waterloo, anyway, when it, when it took place in 1815, Rod Steiger looks more like Napoleon in 1815. So the two of okay. them complement each other very well because Napoleon and Josephine, most of the story took place when they were younger. With uh, sure. Waterloo, it's when Napoleon was already in his late 40s. So, I mean, it's mm-hmm. it, those are two great actors. And I think Jacqueline Phoenix is going to be a great Napoleon because he looks like yeah. him. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 uncanny. Yeah. Remarkable. He's, just, he's an amazing actor. He can embody yeah, he anybody. Really he really, he's he's so versatile. Yeah. And I think he's going to be an excellent Napoleon. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. That, that'll be really. Yeah, good. I'm really looking forward cool. to it. Really, I'm. Uh, it's supposed to come out, I think, next year. Um, okay. But when you have Steven Spielberg working on it and a whole bunch of other great producers, I mean. You know, that's, you, you, that's you, be a good one. yeah, I mean, you've got a great, great storyline here. I mean, you have mm-hmm. perhaps the most popular historical figure ever, and you're going to make a mm-hmm. the best producers are going to make a movie about him. So, I mean, that's yeah. that's a win. Yeah, that's super cool. No, that's that's super neat. So, um, I mean, I'm just I'm just pleased as punch at your your story, <laughs> and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to clip that and share that. I just absolutely love that. So, so moving cool. on from from that. Um, 
what, one of the last questions that I, I like to ask our guests is, is regional mm-hmm. history, mm-hmm. right? You mentioned you're sure. from New Jersey, right? Not too yes. far from, we lived in Erie, which is a little bit further away on the other side of the yeah, state. Yeah, we have family in Jersey, we, though. We've got and, family in Jersey, mm-hmm. so we're, we're familiar with the, the New Jersey area. So if we were coming to visit you, and we were like, we're going to do a walk with history, Eddie, and gonna, we want to stay local, where would you take us? What's your local history there? That Oh, yeah. Something, yeah. something, something the, the locals know that everybody else sure. may or may not. I would take you to uh, Fort Lee, which is okay. the actual fort itself. It's not just a town. It's an actual mm-hmm. cool. fort. Uh, Fort All Lee, right I take you to uh, the Palisades, where uh, the British had ascended the Palisades. Lord Cornwallis brought his army up the 300-foot mm-hmm. Palisades. Um, I would bring you to Hackensack, which is right next door to me. I live right next door to Hackensack. you got a lot of old cemeteries okay. there. Um, yeah, I yeah. live in cool. Burton County is is chock full of colonial history and American Revolutionary War history. So we have several mm-hmm. battlefields. We actually have one in my town here of Hasbro Kites. It's a small one. Um, we also have a lot of battlefields in, in southern New Jersey. We have Monmouth Battlefield. Uh, and of oh, course, yeah. we have my New York City. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have New York City. And mm-hmm. a lot of people don't realize New York City, Manhattan, Brooklyn and part of Queens, Long Island. They're on they're they're actually standing on a large battlefield of the American Revolutionary War. And there really yes. isn't much uh. in the way of statues and plaques to commemorate that event, but it was the largest battle by numbers. And it's it's really forgotten here because of the industry and the commercialization and everything. Whereas Boston sure. does a great job of preserving their history, New York yeah. City really doesn't. <laughs> Just kind of pave over yeah. it. Yeah, they don't. I mean I, I took my cousins to what it was at Francine's Tavern, the one Frost's where Tavern, George Washington yes. had his last. Yeah, yes. the one right by yep. the church, right by Ground yes. Zero, as you would know. Oh, yeah. Um, yep. And that still exists. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't go. Went to dinner there. <laughs> was going to go to dinner there yep. a few weeks ago. Uh, we mm-hmm. had dinner reservations, but something personal came up. And we couldn't go. But it's a very nice yeah. place to go. It's, it's very affordable. It's a very nice atmosphere. Mm-hmm. And once you step inside, you're like, wow. You know, General Washington was right here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He was right here. His yeah. officers were right here. That's really cool. You know, so mm-hmm. you get all giddy about it, like yeah. we do. It, it, you know, <laughs> I, do. I do. I really do. That's that's me. That's right up my alley. <laughs> yeah, and I, I just kind of I follow along. I follow along and, and wrang, wrangle our kids. Well, and, and it's fun to you know, and that's one of the things we've enjoyed. Like we're in Norfolk, Virginia, mm-hmm. and okay. one of the fun things about living where we are now, and probably about where you are is as you know fans of history and living right smack in the middle of where all yep. this history happened mm-hmm. oh yeah it's, i mean you're just like a kid in a, a kid in a candy store mm-hmm. we've got a, oh, friend, yeah. a friend of ours i think you just talked to her the other day that lisa from historical usa yeah, of course, she's in absolutely. washington dc now mm-hmm. and she yeah. says she's just out all the time just walking mm-hmm. around dc yep. and i mean how could you not you know live live in places like that and be like okay I, i've got plenty of stuff to do on my to-do list I'm, I'll, mm-hmm. my list is full I for mean, the weekend for the next couple of years down yeah. in virginia and you'll notice down in virginia you got the american civil war you got the american revolution you have everything yeah. right there yeah uh, you know we have, so we have colonial we're yeah yeah we're gonna sh- yeah we have the um what do they call it? the historic triangle so we have yes. williamsburg jamestown and yorktown yeah. right so the yeah. historic and triangle is here yeah they're all great mm-hmm. places to visit. I've been there at least once. <laughs> it's so great. We have we have years long past Williamsburg. Yeah. Like we're, we're there all the time. I'm like a kid in a candy store when yeah. we go. Well, I got really a cool. A I, I got a cool Williamsburg story. If you got a few seconds here, so yeah, absolutely. I, I went to Williamsburg uh, the first time. I went to Williamsburg when I was really it was like I think 1982. As a matter of fact, the same year you mm-hmm. were born. And that was my first time. <laughs> and when I went back the second time in 1990, uh, when I was a teenager, mm-hmm. I remember walking through the Williamsburg Cemetery. And you talk mm-hmm. about older graves, okay? There was this one above-ground crypt. The woman had died, I believe, in the 1760s. And she had died while giving, uh, giving birth, which was very common mm-hmm. in the 18th century, as you sure. know. Yep. Yes. And... Inside the, the, the crypt itself, on the inscription, it said, I forgot the lady's name, unfortunately, but it said mother and baby. So the two of them were actually in there. And there was a crack in the crypt itself, the above ground crypt. And you could actually see inside. 
Now, you couldn't see a box mm. because over the course of time, wood decays. But you did see sure. something in there. And I was pretty uh. spooked out by it, but also thought it was pretty cool. I'm like, wow, because yeah. I love going to cemeteries at night. And I'm all for that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm into the ghost hunting and everything like that. And I love looking at the gravestones. <laughs> I drive my fiance crazy because we go to all different grave sites. And she plays oh, Pokemon yeah. Go and I play Gravesite. <laughs> so, Perfect. But yeah, that's yeah. Uh, one of my that Williamsburg sounds... stories. <laughs> yeah. That's that's a cool one. So you would love the Williamsburg Ghost Tour then. Have you ever done one? Yes, I did. Yeah, they had it back then when I oh, went Oh, I was yeah. like. Yeah, I, I told Lisa she has to come down and do one with me um, since I have a year long pass. Um, but uh, <laughs> I, they do the lords and they take yes. you around, mm -hmm. right? And they tell yeah. you. And I love ghost stories because I love the history of the ghost story, right? Sure. I learned all about George With through a ghost mm -hmm. story. I learned all about his wife and their house and their influence mm -hmm. to Thomas Jefferson through a ghost story. So I, I really appreciate ghost story history. I mean, even when we went to Dublin, we did the Bram Stoker. Yep ghost oh, wow, because you learn cool. all about him yeah Isn't because he? he would get the cadavers and you know yeah. you started to think about writing dracula you know so it's like you learn a lot about history through these yeah. stories i i just always appreciate it about them so i i enjoy them he he can take it or leave it but yeah. i i like it <laughs> <laughs> well on but, halloween uh, and, I, and, I wanted to uh, on halloween i wanted to do a live on clinton road i'm sure you've heard of clinton road before i don't know it's considered to be the most haunted road in america and it's in west Milford, right. new jersey right down the street from where my fiance lives and it's rumored to be haunted by Native American spirits, by soldiers of the American Revolution, um, escaped slaves from the Underground Railroad. So there's a lot of history there, and it's really spooky. I mean, you go through there. I mean, I'm not scared off by things like that very easily, but when you go down there and you drive through those windy roads at night, it's uh, pretty cool. And for a live session, I really want to do it this year. I didn't get a chance to do it last year, but... Um, it should be pretty cool when I do. <laughs> oh, that'd be neat. That would be neat. My friend was going to come on this, but I, I don't. I don't see her on here. She has a great ghost story from Gettysburg. Oh, my, me like too. Like she was uh, jogging. How could you not? She was jogging with her dad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they saw two. They thought they were reenactors coming the other oh, yeah. way. It was over by it was over by Devil's Den. It was right? over by Devil's Den. Yeah, and it was and they kind of waved at him and they didn't really wave back. They oh they didn't they didn't wave back at all. They just looked at him and they were um all like dirty and they were like wow they're real they're going for it with really the reenacting into it, like know? they're like they're well, really into it. <laughs> and then that night they took a ghost tour and they went mm -hmm. by there and the guy said one of the two biggest specters that people see the most or on this it's road, like, and it's these two, and her and her dad looked at each other and were like, what? Wow. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I was, well, I've was. i done a ghost tour in Gettysburg. Those are cool, too. I like the Gettysburg they are. ones. Because, again, they are. learned I, a ton I, of my, stuff. I've been to Gettysburg, no kidding, I, at least 70 or 80 times, you know, from reenactments wow. and, you know. Sure. Um, but I, I, my, yep. my, my favorite Gettysburg ghost story, real quick, is the ghost story where I was actually the ghost. And we were, yeah, we were down there for um, the filming of the movie Gettysburg. Okay. And, you know, reenactors were kind of funny people. We like to dress up on our uniforms, even though we're not reenacting. We go out to dinner and everything. <laughs> we go to bars and all that. <laughs> well, I just happened to go out into the National Cemetery out there and uh, was walking around. And there was this newlywed couple that was at the hotel we were staying at. And my parents are outside. And um, I come walking out of the cemetery and I'm in my full union uniform, my sword, my ostrich plumed hat and everything like that. And all of a sudden, That's the married cool. couple turns around and freaks out and they ran to the manager <laughs> and said that I, they saw a ghost coming out of the cemetery. So the manager comes back and I had gone into the, the room thinking that I didn't know what was going on. Right. So I come out with the mm -hmm. uniform. And they look like they've literally seen a ghost. They're all pale. My parents are like, oh, that's just my son. You know, oh, my God, we're going to leave. You know? but, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. But you must yeah. have really looked the part. Oh, yeah. No, that's I did. So, that's, <laughs> definitely did. That's so great. I definitely did. <laughs> well, well, Eddie, I, I, I feel like that's we awesome. could probably keep talking about Napoleon military movies or, or, <laughs> yeah. or ghosts for the for the next hour, hour and change. Probably. But we're actually get up early and, and run off yeah. to uh, a, no a neat spot down in North Carolina tomorrow morning for another walk with history. So 
Awesome. Um, if people wanted to, what's the best place for people to find you? Is it still the Instagram account or do you have other It's spots, definitely Instagram. It's definitely you? Instagram. That's okay. my principal social media platform right now. Um, it's uh, History Unlimited and also uh, the Vietnam War 3.0. Those are my two accounts on Instagram okay. that I personally run. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Right, right on. Well, well, thank you so All much right. for joining us. Well, and for, for anybody you. listening or watching, thank you. anybody listening or watching, if you enjoyed this episode of Talk With History, then you'll probably enjoy some of our past episodes where we interview other well-known history hosts like Eddie Tonight. Uh, we've interviewed hosts like JD of the History Underground, Matt of the Mr. Beat History Channel, or Chris from yep. Docs YouTube mm-hmm. Cemetery Tours. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. They all have some great stories to tell as we talked mm-hmm. about tonight. Mm-hmm. So... Thank you again to those listening for, listening for listening to the Talk With History podcast. And please reach out to us at our website, talkwithhistory.com. But more importantly, if you know someone else that might enjoy this podcast, please share it with them. Shoot them a text. Tell them to check out the Talk With History podcast because we rely on you, our community, to grow. And we appreciate you all every day. Talk to you next time. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Take care. All right. So I'm going to hit end on the broadcast here. Just hang out.